Hello friends and welcome to Sustainable Prepping, your home for fear-free emergency preparedness and a sustainable life. My name is Brecky and today we are diving into our third and final video in the mini series on the three tier food storage plan with our look at long-term food storage. If you're new here, I wanna say a great big welcome. I'm so glad you found this slice of the internet and if you're not new, I wanna say welcome back. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon and the all so you never miss a video. So we are finishing up our look at the three tier food storage plan. I teach a three-tier food storage model which works with your working pantry or everything that you have in your fridge, freezer, and pantry shelves right now as your first tier, a mid-tier plan that is based around a meal plan but is primarily made up of stuff that you can buy at the grocery store along with some specialty items and then your long-term mostly dry grain goods food storage. And when we think of emergency preparedness food storage, when we think of prepper food storage, this is what we think of. This is the rice, the beans, the dried salt, sugar, powdered milk possibly. It's all this stuff that you imagine someone with a bunch of buckets in their basement hoarding, right? This is what we think of. Now in my plan, the long-term food storage is actually your last goal, okay? You wanna make sure you have that six to eight weeks of a working pantry. You want at least an entire month of that dedicated mid-level food storage already Already organized, already purchased before you really put all your energy into the long-term food storage. And really that's because most of us eat out of our working pantry and our mid-tier food storage. It's accessible, it's familiar, it's easy to get. Longer term food storage, while it's not necessarily hard to get, it does have a lot more steps in place to make it long term. Now, I think you should learn these skills. I absolutely think everyone should understand how to preserve their food for long term gain for having it a while. You need to know how to use five gallon buckets. You need to know how to use mylar. You need to know how to use an oxygen absorber. Those are all great skills, but they are a skill with an investment and a learning curve. When we're talking about wanting to have our food storage fast and having that insulation in place quickly, this is not something that is necessarily a quick fix, okay? But it's still important. So today we're diving in and looking at that long-term food storage. So when you're planning your long-term food storage, what exactly do you need? What should you be focusing on? I'm going to be drawing some numbers from the LDS Church, also known as the Mormons. They perhaps have the most comprehensive emergency preparedness plan anywhere. I mean, there isn't a government on the planet that has a better plan than the Mormon church. And the reason is that in that particular religious tradition, preparedness and a provident lifestyle is actually a religious precept. It's something that they teach from their, their pulpits. I don't actually know if they have pulpits. I'm not Mormon, I'm Presbyterian, but they have a really comprehensive emergency preparedness plan and they teach and preach a preparedness lifestyle. If you're someone who buys freeze-dried food, you'll notice that almost all of the major freeze-dried food companies in the United States are out of Utah. And that's because Utah is home to the Mormons and has a massive industry around long-term food storage, just as an aside. I will leave a link down below from where I got these numbers. They come from provenientliving.org, which is again, a ministry of the LDS church. I'm not LDS, but they have good resources. So according to the LDS, the minimum for one adult to have a year supply of long-term food storage, you would need 400 pounds of grains, and this includes wheat, flour, rice, pasta, oats, stuff like that. You would need 60 pounds of legumes, and legumes are your beans, your lentils, your split peas, 16 pounds of powdered milk, 10 quarts of cooking oil, 60 pounds of sugar or honey, and eight pounds of salt. This is your basic must-haves to survive. Now, 400 pounds of grains is a lot, a lot of grain, okay? You're looking at quite a chunk and that's just for one person. Now let's consider a family of four. And in my opinion, you should always plan to be feeding the adult version of the people in your home because your kids are gonna grow up. And with long-term food storage, you're not necessarily gonna replace that every couple of years as they grow. So I would go ahead and plan for, if you have two small children now, just go ahead and plan to feed them like they're adults so that if in 10 years you're cracking into it and they're now teenagers, you have enough food to feed them, okay? So we take the numbers that we have and we divide them down by three, okay? And we can either think of it as one person having four months of food storage or a family of four having one month of food storage, which is what I'm going to assume is best. So a family of four with one month of food storage based on the LDS numbers, it's going to look like this. 
about 130 pounds of grains, 20 pounds of legumes, about five and a half pounds of milk, 20 pounds of sugar, just over three pounds of cooking oil, and about two and three quarters pounds of salt. Now that's gonna get you one person four months of food storage or one quarter of a year of food storage or one family of four one month of dedicated long-term food storage. Okay, so we have these big raw numbers about long-term food storage. What does that mean? What does that look like? What is that investment? To put it in perspective, a five gallon bucket like this, okay, five gallon bucket, it's gonna run you about 35 pounds of rice and about 30 pounds of small beans. A big bucket like this will get you about 36 and a half pounds of white sugar and about 30 pounds of white flour. So if we start thinking about what that translates to for just one month of food storage for a family of four, you're going to need to get to 130 pounds of grains. And let's say you do all of that as rice. You're looking at about four of these buckets just to get a family of four through one month of long-term food storage. Now you would only need about one big bucket of legumes to your four buckets of grains, but you would need four buckets of grains or so four buckets of rice, one bucket of legumes, since black beans are about 30 plus pounds per uh, five gallon bucket. You need a couple big tubs of coconut oil in order to get your cooking oil in. You would need one, not quite one whole bucket, about two thirds of a bucket full of sugar to get your sugar intake. And you would need about three of these number 10 cans of powdered milk to get your milk needs met. Now this is just shy of two pounds. It's one pound and 13 ounces. So three of these would definitely get you to your five and a half pounds of dry milk that is suggested for a family of four for one month of long-term food storage. As you can see, when you start looking at long-term food storage and these raw materials in bulk settings, they get to add up really fast. And this is why I think that this is the last hurrah. This is the last place that you should go. Also, excuse the church bells, we're just gonna keep rolling. When we look at these raw numbers, we can see how easily someone who is brand new to emergency preparedness can get overwhelmed you're gonna to need to buy four buckets worth of rice and a whole bucket's worth of beans and three things of powdered milk just to get through one month. Where are you gonna store all of that? And then when you have all that rice and beans, what are you gonna do with any of it? This is why I, again, teach that three-tier method. These raw materials are totally usable and you can learn to integrate them into other tiers and all of your cooking, but that will take time to do that well. So my suggestion is to start small. If you can start conquering this one month to-do list, do that. But if you can't, that's okay. If you don't think that you can plan for this one month of long-term food storage in this raw form, how about you plan on just getting one bucket of rice and one bucket of beans, right? Start there. Start with getting a couple of bags of sugar that you vacuum seal together or get a five gallon bucket. For those of you who don't know y'all, this is a five gallon bucket. It's food grade. You're definitely gonna want four food, food grade buckets. And these are Mylar, are Mylar bags. This is a one gallon Mylar bag. You can see it kind of reflecting there. And then these are five gallon. These big ones are five gallon Mylar bags. Now it's beyond the scope of this video for me to show you how to use all of that in depth. I'll put a video up to show you uh, a walkthrough that I did with smaller scale Mylar bag packing, but you're gonna need to use some of this to package your own long-term food storage but you don't have to tackle this whole month all at once. Maybe you decide that this week you're going to get at least one five gallon bucket of rice, maybe two, depending upon how much rice costs. Get a couple of buckets. A couple of buckets is better than no buckets. Work up to that four buckets and figure out where you're gonna put them. Maybe you decide four buckets of rice and a bucket of beans is totally doable. I'm gonna jump right in and make that my first goal. Do the things. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, I'm a single person or my partner and I don't have children. It's just the two of us. That seems like a lot of food and I don't want to store it all in a big bucket like this. Get you some of these smaller Mylar bags, okay, because you can fill these. You can fill these and pop those in there and you can just keep track of your poundage so you know how many pounds um, based on how much you fill up in your gallon. Um, 
that you're storing and then just store them. You can even store them in a Rubbermaid container, okay? We just wanna keep them away from pests, sunlight, and moisture. With long-term food storage, you're really storing raw materials. And in my opinion, you're storing stuff that you're gonna use to stretch other things. I think it's a big misnomer that you're expected to just eat your grains and legumes and sugar and salt and cooking oil for like a month or six months or a year. Honestly, we all get really sick. Like not just sick of the food texture and taste wise, but our bodies would get really sick if that's all we ate. I think what you should mentally do is assume that your long-term food storage is actually there as supplemental food storage. So if it looks like the shelves are getting more and more bare, things are looking pretty sparse, instead of strictly eating through your working pantry and your midterm food storage, maybe you're taking the rice and the beans and you're adding them in to stretch meals, to augment meals, to stretch out these other more conventionally canned foods so that you have more food storage for longer rather than just eating through everything in your kitchen and then eating through everything in your midterm pantry and then cracking into the rice and beans. It becomes a more holistic way of looking at your food storage. Additionally, you can plan to have your freeze-dried, commercially freeze-dried goods on your long-term food storage. This has a 20-year shelf life right here. This, this country fresh uh, Augustine Farm milk has a 20-year shelf life. I bought it in 2020. It'll be good until 2040. My Thrive Life chicken, this also has a 20-year shelf life. I got it in 2021 and it'll be good until 2041. So you don't have to just store grains, legumes, sugar, salt. Like you can have some of these freeze dried items and you can home freeze dry things as well. Though you do have to be careful that you really keep oxygen and moisture out because they can cause your stuff to mold. The thing is these are more expensive to create a long-term food storage plan around. I think the best plan really is good working pantry, solid mid-tier pantry, bare bones in your long-term pantry. Then spend your money getting other areas of your life squared away. Once you're comfortable with other, where all of those things are with your fuel and your finances and your sanitation plan and all of that then come back and start adding more of these nicer kind of long-term uh not necessities but assets you might say right you don't need to have this in your long-term food storage to survive you might need the rice and beans to survive you don't need the yummy mashed potatoes but you'll want them and i would add these to the long-term food storage chunk of your plan last. At the end of the day, long-term food storage to me is the most daunting. It takes the most skill to acquire, it takes the most time to put together, and it takes the most space to store. If you are brand new to a food storage plan, definitely work on having a nice, robust working pantry. That's your fridge and your freezer and your pantry shelves, all the stuff that you have in your kitchen. Make sure you have enough for four, six, or eight weeks worth of eating from your kitchen, from your pantry. Then take the time to organize a one month meal plan and buy everything you need for one month of shelf stable meals for your midterm pantry. Again, if you need help, I've got a course and you can find it down below. Finally, once you have all of that, as you get momentum and you have wins and you feel good, go and invest in the gallon, the five gallon buckets and the Mylar bags and start storing your rice and beans. You may wanna do some of these things in conjunction. I totally understand the need to wanna to store flour, especially right now, maybe some cornmeal, maybe some rice, because these are grains that may be scarce in the coming months, and that's fine too. But don't feel like you have to jump into long-term food storage if you don't feel quite ready to learn the skill of long-term food storage and have the place to put it all. You can do other things first, and that's okay. Now for me, I have a solid six week working pantry and that really works well for me between my fridge, my freezer and my pantry shelves. I also have 90 days of midterm pantry and that midterm pantry, I'm actually gonna expand to 120 days. So I'm gonna just go back to my meal plan, look at everything I have and then add another month's worth to all of my supplies. Finally, I currently am working on rounding out everything I need for three months of long-term food storage. Now, I'm not adding powdered milk to my long-term food storage. This is one of the places I differ with the LDS church. I have quite a bit in my midterm food pantry. I don't have it in my long-term food pantry, but I do have legumes, I have beans uh, of a variety of different flavors. I have salt and sugar. 
and spices, don't forget spices in all levels of your pantry, they will lose their potency, but they won't necessarily go bad. So they're worth having on hand. And if I have all of that organized, then I am set to have a really robust amount of food in my home that can be used easily, that can be used excessively. Honestly, right now at this very moment, I have between five and six months of food stored in different levels of my house. And that's pretty exciting when we think about potential food shortages. Friends, comment down below and let me know what you are doing for your long-term food storage and what you're doing for your holistic food storage plan. If you don't use the numbers from the LDS Church, where do you get your numbers? I'd love to know. And I'd love to know what your goals are specifically for your long-term food storage. Are you going for a whole year? Are you going for one month somewhere in the middle? I'd love to know what you have to say. Friends, you can hang out with me on Instagram and down in our Facebook group. We'd love to have you join us. Also, if you found this video useful, if you learned something, please give it a big old like, subscribe to the channel, and send it to a friend. Let them know it doesn't have to be overwhelming and it doesn't have to be scary to get their emergency preparedness in order. I hope each and every one of you are doing well, and until the next video, happy prepping.